listening to that was Goldrie's Garaman from the Greens. She's a spokesperson for Justice. She joins me here in the Wellington studio. Morena. Uh, Morena. Is there any way at all that you could offer any support for this bill? Uh, yes, absolutely. So we're happy to work with the minister to introduce safeguards that would, uh, you know, alleviate our concerns. And um, our concerns are that this bill essentially is unnecessary. Our criminal law exists. The uh, crime of terrorism exists. Uh, police have powers to surveil people and to hold them and we know that and they will apply to Mark Taylor whether this bill is in place or not. But leaving that to one side, this particular bill captures uh, people that have been convicted or deported from essentially anywhere in the world based on terrorism type allegations and we know that other nations um, often uh, consider political dissidents. My, my home nation of Iran would consider a feminist activist a terrorist, an environmental activist a terrorist. Um, we know protesters in Hong Kong may be caught by that because China considers them terrorists and we um, don't think that that kind of law has application in New Zealand or should have. Let's just clarify. You say you don't want, to, you don't want the bill, it's not necessary, but you are willing to actually negotiate uh, perhaps on a watered-down version. We would like the human rights concerns to be alleviated so that it actually at least if we're going to have a bill like this that's a specialised bill, at least it just mirrors our criminal law. It's not, it's not to my mind necessary and you know, having worked in the criminal justice system I know that someone like Mark Taylor um, would easily be charged um, with terrorism and then going through the bail process he could either be held if he's a flight risk or he could be surveilled he could be monitored um, we already have those laws in place so it, but if we're going to have this then let's at least you know if we're making ourselves feel better let's at least have it mirror our uh, you know uh, law that's already there that's judicially overseen that um, has human rights concerns um, sort of uh, built into it. So you don't have faith largely in the authorities to get the correct information and then to be able to apply it fairly. No, I do have the faith in our authorities to do that. It's that we're now introducing our faith in foreign authorities to do that because this bill actually captures anyone that's been found by foreign uh, nation states to be a terrorist or been deported for, for terrorism-like offences under their law. Not ours, which, is, which make, is a problem. How would you make New Zealand safer? Because this is what Andrew Little says it's all about, is making the country safe. And we actually need to have the measures now, not when something might happen. Well, the measures are there. We have the crime of terrorism and we have the ability of police once they've charged someone. Um, and, and, you know, they don't have to prove the charges at that stage. And, and again, if we take the Mark Taylor case, I mean, if someone has travelled to join ISIS, which is an organisation that's um, already uh, categorised as a terrorist organisation... Coming back in here, we would be able to charge him and the Bail Act would apply. All sorts of other um, surveillance uh, laws would apply if, if needs be, and we know that the police has applied those. But we also know that we've had, we've gone down this road before. We uh, know that the Ahmed Zawi case exists when New Zealand held uh, essentially a, an opposition politician from Algeria without charge or trial on secret classified information. And this is the kind of information that's likely to be used under this. Uh, bill as well uh, for two years and that was because Algeria saw him as a terrorist just because he was a political dissident. So what further safeguards would you want to see put into this bill for you to be able to support it? Uh, well, that New Zealand uh, standards of the, the definition of terrorism would apply, um, but that not uh, including being deported or, uh, or uh, found guilty of terrorism in, in foreign jurisdictions. Um, and, and, I mean, we're lowering the standard of proof with this. So we're lowering it from a criminal standard of proof to a civil standard of proof, um, which we also say is unnecessary. We have different standards of proof throughout our system, and we, we just need to apply those. Do you accept that there are threats to New Zealand's security and safety of people? And that we need measures to be able to uh, look after those issues? Yes, absolutely. That's why we have, you know, the crime of terror and we also have all of the different uh, surveillance uh, powers that police and, and the SIS have. So, you know, and, and those are already inbuilt. So we're expanding those. Mm -hmm. um, and the worry is that, you know, we hear the word terrorism. It's very emotive. And absolutely people who have uh, gone overseas to join terrorist organisations like ISIS need to be held to account, need to come through the justice system. But we don't want to expand the law in such a way that's both unnecessary and actually harmful, doesn't keep us safe. Say Mark Taylor turns up at uh, Auckland International Airport tomorrow, what would your approach be? How would you cope with it? Well, I'm 
fairly certain he would be very swiftly charged with uh, being involved in a terrorist organisation as well as a raft of other offences. He's already, um, you know, he's been captured as part of a ISIS combatant force. Um, he's admitted to, you know, trying to exonerate himself, he's actually admitted to helping with uh, uh, various things like acting as a watch um, for, for ISIS and that that's being party to terrorism. Uh, and again, the organisation is already categorised as a terror organisation. So it wouldn't be a problem. We would absolutely charge him. And then, then he'd go through the court processes, including maybe being detained if he's a flight risk. Or imprisoned. But how about yeah. those? And there were uh, some Kiwis reported to be fighting for the Kurds. And some might say that, that they were on the good side uh, in that conflict, if there was a good side. Yeah, and our criminal justice system says that, you know, they would then get a hearing of that. They would be able to provide evidence and, 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 you know, debunk our allegations. And and in the same way, the police um, or our authorities would have to um, provide some evidence of of the opposite of that if we want to hold them. And, And that's just the way that the justice system works. So some causes will be good, some causes will be bad. Well, it's about due process. And you are, you are, you think due process as it currently exists is sufficient? Uh, I do, and and I mean it, it is always worrying when we introduce law. Uh, and, you know, there's a saying in the in the law: bad cases make bad law. Um, we we we're trying really hard to catch a specific person, but we change the law and 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 inadvertently um, make it weaker. Thank you very much for your time this morning. That's Goldrus Gowerman from the Green Party.